Wait, so this is uh yes. Okay. Um so I'm going to talk about some details about the pi square framework uh, that uh, Dora introduced to us recently. Um, I'm working on the team, uh, so I'm, I'm on the team that's working on this uh, for like the past 10 weeks, I think. Um, so I haven't had contact with like every component, but I can tell you a bit about what I know. Um, right. Oops. This has a delay. Okay. Um, so I'm. I actually had a short recap because I thought I was going before the story about how the pi square framework works in the high level. Uh, and I'm going to touch the details that I kind of know. Uh, you might recognize some of the slides. Actually, Gregory has new fancy slides, which I wasn't aware of. I the ones I've stolen are a bit outdated. So you'll you'll excuse me for for that. Right, so this is um, what um, Gora showed us basically um, just recently. Um, so we have the thing, the mathematical proof, the snark to proof checker, and we have the certificate that the mathematical proof actually checks on the proof checker, right? And this is what we want to score because it's much smaller than the original proof. Now, um, let's get more concrete on this. Something that was done as a proof of concept in around June this year. Um, <clears throat> MetaMath was chosen as the language uh, in which to encode the statements. So basically, we had to define matching logic in MetaMath. Actually, I think, like as Sparazio said, um, matching logic was defined in MetaMath a while ago, but now this definition was also used for this purpose. Um, we used risk zero to uh, basically write the MetaMath checker. Uh, risk zero is a ZKVM, it's a virtual machine, uh, where, long story short, you can write Rust code and it's run in a ZK fashion. You'll get a certificate that indeed, when you run like the checker on this input, like it doesn't panic. So this was June. Uh, right. A few details actually on um, the components that we used back then. So as Horatio said, MetaMath is a general purpose formal proof language. It's very simple. Uh, the verifiers tend to be very short, as you were also mentioned. And there are many implementations. It has quite a big community. So it's generally like a good thing to you know, uh, formalize your your newer uh, logics and stuff uh, in. Uh, right, so we have this definition of matching logic in MetaMath. It turns out that the resulting, is the resulting definition, the terms were way too verbose. This is because MetaMath is very general. Um, and so like a lot of, there were a lot of steps just to prove well-formedness of uh, matching logic terms, which is something like you, you wouldn't really need to do Basically, there was a lot of water break for quite obvious things, obvious, you know, a matching logic sense. Um, and it also didn't play very well with risk zero. So, like, the performance uh, of the checker on the MetaMath proofs, um, even like notwithstanding their length, was pretty bad. A um, couple of words about risk zero. Uh, risk zero is a ZKVM which emulates a RISC five computer. So it, it emulates a RISC five set of instructions. Um, right. And the verifier was written in Rust. So I basically went over this already. Right. Uh, what changed in the meanwhile? So now in October, um, there are a few changes. Um, we tried to get rid of MetaMath and we mostly succeeded. Um, we replaced it by a new language. Which I'll call soda. More on that later. Uh, why, what, why? why soda? I I named it this morning, so I can I can tell you, <laughs> I can tell you why later. Um, <laughs> it will be in the next slide. Um, we're still using risk zero for the checker, but we're also looking into zkllvm, um, and we are researching folding schemes to be able to enable parallelism. This is what I was discussing with 
and yeah. yeah, so this makes sense about folding schemes. Actually, they fold together the input and the yeah. That, that, that's what I want to follow the proposal. Yeah, that's yeah. my question. How do you fold the data? Yeah, yeah. Um, like we, we we don't have like a completely precise idea, but we know conceptually that Definitely. should probably be a folding scheme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so as I say here, the name soda is something I picked uh, this morning because. We always say binary proof format in our meetings, and it's very confusing. Um, especially since like we sometimes have other binary formats for four, for example, and stuff. Um, so basically so that was just uh, there's this pun with like pi, slice of pi, and so is like baking so. Okay. We don't have to like it, we can forget it, but I really didn't want to say binary proof format for a specific talk, so it's like sufficient. Okay. So this is an internally developed low-level proof language tailored to encoding and verifying matching logistics. So we've replaced MetaMath with an internal language that works better with matching logic. You have a description here. A technical description from our internal docs. Um, so yeah, it's a giant post fits polish notation representation of matching logic proof as a DAG. So basically it's stack based. Uh, we push stuff to the stack and we, we construct terms and then like we consume terms with uh proof rule. So basically I would uh um, so I do something like, uh, you know, push X and I have X on the stack and then I do push Y and I have Y and I do implementation with no arguments and now I would have X implies Y on the stack. Uh, and this is how I build terms, and then I also have a modus ponens instruction which takes two premises from the stack, pops them, puts the result on. Uh, we'll see more examples. Uh, this is actually similar to MetaMath, which is also stack based. Um, right. Uh, so, so that's actually like we, we actually uh, encode the proofs as streams of bytes. Um, the verifier processes these streams and it constructs the claims and the proofs and also checks them at the same time. Um, we have higher level generators and translators. So we have translators from the MetaMath part that we did um, in June and earlier. Um, but more importantly, like we have work to translate form into certain streams. Um, one thing that is important uh, is that we have save and load instructions. So now, if I have the term here on the stack, I can use save and then like memory somewhere which says that like at an index zero, I save this term. And then further down, I want use it I can call load zero um, it will put it on the stack and we want to do this so that we're able to reuse terms and subterms and reference them uh simply so because like a, a big problem with very formal proofs is that they are very large and the terms themselves are very large so we basically we have this these primitives for building terms uh, but also for saving them. So this means we have, like, we have control over how, if we want to, we could save everything, right? Like at the generation and translation level, um, we can save every term. This would probably like blow up memory, so it would not be like the optimal trade-off. We could also choose to not save anything, but we could also do like a frequency uh, analysis on the final proof to see, or or like chunks of the proof if we only have a stream and need to do it online. Um, but we can 
choose to optimize what terms we say. Yes, yes. So basically, we were, were forced to, well, at some point, every term that occurs in a group should be constructed the first time. But once you construct it once, you might want to be able to save it for further reference, just so it can use a single integer to refer to a huge term when, for example, doing more response and stuff like that. So basically, this is the encoding that the checker, the verifier is going to work with. Uh, and we want it to be both succinct and like easy to, but also not very complicated. So like, because it's part of the, the verifier is part of the, the trust base. Um, right, so here we have a proof of implication and reflexivity in propositional logic. Um, we have the natural language one, like you'd find in the textbook, in the natural textbook, and then you have um, the soda variant, which, like, you don't have to be technical to agree this is much more relevant, right? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But like computers tend to tend to like this, right? So the, the, these two are equivalent. Like our our checker takes this and says, yes, this is implication of activity. Like, um, but of course, we we don't work with this. But but this is the actual stuff we're streaming. So the, this is the, what we're finding. Um, sure. The big part, the five yeah. codes, yeah, yeah. That contains public input and. Um, no, that's a good question. So actually, this I've only selected the proof, but um, I don't have gamma here. Actually, gamma would be empty, so there would be no axiom because the. Oh, the, on the blockchain. Yeah, yeah, it could be on the blockchain. The blockchain. It, it, yes, but technically, it is input of the verifier. So, um, this is only the proof. But I would have a separate file with the claim, what I'm proving. So this, like the last step, P implies P, there would be separate bytecode that simply describes the term P implies P. So that it would have two. I would push P, push P implication. A claim. It's the claim. Uh, no, it's not a claim. No, no, the claim is what we want to prove. So basically, that's the public input. I think, in a sense. Um, the axioms um, actually are empty for propositional results, but we, if we would have a programming language, the semantics of the programming language in matching logic in K would have to be part of the axiom. Um, but in this case, we don't have any axiom. But this is only the proof, and a small fragment of it would be repeated as a claim as well. Um, this is the same thing, just in a more palatable uh, format. This is part of our, uh, it, it's from our test cases uh, in the Python generator. And there's also like the stack um, as uh, commented here. Uh, so basically, that long instruction just pushes a meta variable that's phi zero. So it's like push phi zero, push phi zero, make an implication. Now we have phi zero implies phi zero push another phi zero. Prop two is one of those. So there are three classical axioms for propositional logic. I know Gore mentioned that you can only, like you can use Lukashevitz and not use three axioms. We actually use three axioms right now. Um, but anyway, so you can actually see the proof uh, step by step until the end. Uh, we have instructions for, so I mentioned the action, the axioms, the meta variable instantiate, which actually replaces the meta variables, and uh, modus ponens, and then publishes like a technical thing that says this is actually now is the point in which I've, I've reached the claim. So now it looks, it looks at this, and then it looks at the claim by stream. And so are these the same thing? And both should be five, five zero, five, five zero. Right. Right. 
And actually, so the code that produces uh, this and also this, um, this is the code, which is much nicer, right? So this is basically we have a, a generator written in Python. And um, so the Pi0 and Pi0 and Pi, Pi0 actually don't even need to be there. They could also be functions like modus ponens is a function here. Uh, what's nice about this function is that it, it doesn't necessarily um, print the byte string. I just showed you it can do that, but it can also do other things. It can simply check the proof, like just assert that it works logically. Uh, it can pretty print it, like format it however you want. Um, it can gather statistics about this proof. Basically, depending on who self is, self here is a different kind of interpreter. We have interpreters that only check. We have interpreters that also check and serialize. We have interpreters that do analytics, stuff like that. So that's a nice thing, uh, which I quite like uh, about our approach. Um, Right. Um, so here I, I, I said earlier that uh, we look at the proof as a bag, a directed circuit graph. Uh, I have a screenshot here from the, our internal documentation to show what I mean. So if we look at top, which is bottom implies bottom, which then bottom is mu xx. Um, if we think about top as a tree, we would get the upper image, right? Um, so, actually, yeah, so the instantiate is a bit redundant, but it's fine. Um, and what happens in the lower image is that, so the mu xx part is actually merged, right? Because those two are, are the, sorry, those two are the same term. So we can only have a single bottom or like a single new XX in memory. And basically, it's not that simple, but in principle, we can take care to save and then use load at the same index to achieve this behavior. Uh, and the verifier, so the verifier tries to do this. It tries to merge identical terms. No, it's corresponding to identity. This is again done in order to compress this and be able to handle uh, larger sizes. Right. Um, so completely, well, not completely. Nothing is independent really in this framework. All, all the moving parts depend on each other, but like um, nothing to do with soda directly. Um, Gregorio mentioned that proof checking is inherently parallel, right? Um, and we want to take advantage of this so that the overhead, because uh, maybe we didn't mention this explicitly, but even though ZK certificates are small, uh, generating ZK certificates actually has a large concept. And it's also quasi linear, it has a logarithmic effect. I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe it depends on the technology. What you mean by constant? Like it can be more than a constant, either linear, so the proof will be either linear. Oh yeah, no, no, I mean, yeah, yeah, no, I meant it. so by constant, I meant uh, like linear with a large k, or but actually, I think it's it's quite the linear. It also has a lot. Right? Yeah. So you you would have, for example, long, which is quite linear. Okay. Uh, then you would have things like uh, some check which is linear uh, but I think the difference is uh, probably long is more uh, why would you call it that so maybe long is more uh, expressive like yeah, 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 yeah maybe some yeah, check yeah. will have just a part of the problem the expressive yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand yeah the point is this is pretty slow so like even just just having a Certificate of execution just for checking all the propositional results we have, which is like imperfectivity and transitivity and a few others. Uh, it takes it takes about a minute, right? 
which would be like if, if you would execute it normally, it would be like a couple of minutes, I think, very fast, very few steps. But is it possible to have a computational transaction of the security? That's the question. That's what I was discussing with Juana. Uh, yes, it, it should be possible, but, but there are many approaches, and we are not sure what's what is the best. <laughs> what is the best? Yes. So, he, like as a very very simple example of composing two certificates, you can run certificate one on the verifier and run certificate two on a verifier. And ZK this execution of the verifier on these two certificates. And if you if you ZK the execution of the verifier, you basically incorporated these two certificates, like their meaning into the certificate of this running of the verifier. Sort of. I'm still reading about this. Yeah. Um, but yes, so there are quite a few ways, and they have different trade-offs. And there's definitely some overhead in merging different certificates. Uh, but this is a problem we need to solve uh, to be able to actually um, do stuff in parallel efficiently. Um, yeah, so um, Igor was talking about doing each matching logic instruction separately. Uh, we're not completely sure that's how it's going to look in the end. It might just be batches uh, with larger sizes. Um, we actually have an internal debate on this. Like some people believe it's good to have single instructions, and others think there's too much overhead in describing like by itself to apply a single instruction. If you if you go to the pain of describing describing five with a certificate, you might as well try to do a hundred or a thousand steps like, intuitively. But we we don't know what's going to come from that. But like um, there are very many very many trade offs. Um, Right, so yeah, basically this is something which we're actively researching. Uh, what's the best way to compose certificates for lemmas uh, to get a certificate for the whole thing? And right, so there's other work I haven't mentioned here. Um, we're also writing a ZK LLVM verifier. ZK LLVM is a different technology from RISC zero. So ZKLVM is not a virtual machine, but rather a compiler that outputs a ZK circuit. So basically there's a different circuit for each program that you compile. And taking into, into account what Vigora said in his presentation that we are probably going to want to have circuits, maybe not for like separate matching logic instructions, but anyway, for very specialized code, this is a very important step. Right. Uh, we need so so this this is a very natural starting step. Taking uh, a circuit uh, which is produced by ZKLVM and trying to optimize it for analog. Yeah. Who wrote it? Who wrote it? Yeah. So, so this is a circuit compiler, right? Yeah. Is you can you can you you can write um, like anything that compiles to LLVM. Uh, they, we, we write it in the C++ and so we're writing a C++ verifier internally, so it can be compiled. It, it, it can be compiled through ZKLLVM. ZKLLVM itself is, I think it's called a mill foundation. I don't know. So, um, I haven't worked on this part, um, but it, it, it's like they're in the competition um, along with Cairo um, and. So this is the yeah, they are not different. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, so no, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. So so they, they they actually try to not like make any language, right? Like, like they, they try to do it for everything that like works with that LLVM. Uh, so C Rust. Um, how, how so basically any circuit compiler within some some overhead because you need to test the test the you either write or search command. Yes. Uh, and then you yeah. optimize the hell out of them if you yeah. know how and you have the time. Yeah. Yeah. Or if not, you use the circuit compiler. So if you use a circuit compiler for the logic circuit, then you generate it. Or this is the correct way to 
first step and then you want to write your uh, this one is yeah. a few important circuits that you can actually uh, optimize how to sell out them by hand. Uh, yeah, so we, we want something particular to our verifier so that we can study it and perhaps optimize it because risk zero doesn't actually give us a circuit for our verifier. This zero basically has a cube circuit for its own VM. And it gives you a proof. And it gives us a proof. Uh, okay. But so it doesn't give the circuit. Step, yeah, yeah. Step. And then yeah. you want to go, the second step is to yeah. generate your own yeah. circuit and probably the third step is to optimize our circuit. Yeah, yeah. But like this zero was more mature. Uh, at the moment we started, and it was easier to use, but now we also have resources to help with PPK over Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seeing where the first it works. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and also, uh, like, we have, uh, there's work done from the LLVM backend team. This is, we're talking K framework LLVM backend, um, like Dwight and Guy, maybe the website. Um, they're working on outputting something that we can easily translate into the soda by stream that we saw. Um, again, I, I wasn't very involved in this, but this is also happening in parallel. So we're basically working on all the all the components of the pipeline we've seen in, in the first slides. Yeah. This is a lot of cryptography, and then working with the crypto tools if somebody yes. did the tool, it would kill a lot of yes. and, and the tools aren't very developed not, yet. Not it is yes and it's not like for for risk zero for zkllvm it's not even completely clear if the technology to snarf like multiple circuits with the full circuit outputted by them is like even available it might be for specific things that they do internally but like not for our own so so this is actually yeah something that we're working on But it, it definitely feels like it's you know, possible. Um, so even if you are using this already existing tools, you feel like you are pushing the boundaries. Even if you are, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we are, especially like even to get things working, but um, even more so when optimizing that's right. Uh, because um, it's um, something. I, I guess it's true in general, but especially for like ZK limiteds, if you do something. Very handmade for your own purpose, it's probably better than yeah, out of the box option. Then you cannot do this right away. You really need to get used to seeing struck yourself and you try many things until you can optimize. Yep, yep, I agree. That's exactly our experience. Yes, I just want to say nothing wrong with it. It's a natural, you cannot go now that there is no other way to do it. Oh, no, I agree. I'm not, I'm not apologizing. I'm just, I'm just explaining to you. Anyone? Are there any questions? Is there anybody left? Um, okay. Well, then we're done. No, no, no. That's it's that's very good. Very good. Yes. Thank you for the question. Yeah, when I saw folding skins, then I was sure. I don't know how you use them, but folding skins is one way to talk about. Yeah. But you fold the as well. Not uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah